Look at this URL. If you have a little bit of experience with the internet, you know it's super simple to understand, right? You have first the protocol, then comes the domain, then a path and then parameters. But we are of course a bit more advanced, so we are aware of the RFC 1738 or the more modern 3986, which actually defines the uniform resource identifier. Here you can see a few typical examples of URIs. URLs, Uniform Resource Locator, refers to a subset of URIs. Let's check the syntax components. First we have the scheme, followed by a colon, and then an here part, and optionally a query and fragment. So we have HTTPS as the scheme here, and then we have slash slash www.youtube.com as here part, and we also have a query v equal. And in here part, starting with a double slash means it's an authority and path a b empty. If you haven't studied computer science, then this kind of writing might look a bit confusing, but I think this video is an excellent example of why computer science or specifically formal languages and how you define grammars and parsers and stuff like that is important. This is a grammar definition here, explaining you how to parse a URL. Further down we find that the authority must contain a host, but can have an optional user info with an at or a colon port. User info can be for example a username and password, and in our case we don't appear to have an at and that's no username or password part. And we can also look up what the path AB empty can be. This could be a slash followed by a segment, and as indicated by the star, similar to regex, zero to many repetitions of that pattern. And a segment can be zero to many p characters, and a p character is this, you get the point. So this sounds all super well defined and easy, right? It's all explained in detail here with countless of examples to test if you do it correctly. So what's the problem? How freaking hard can it be to understand a URL? The title of the video and my short angry outburst might sound condescending, but I really don't mean it like that. I want to emphasize that URLs appear simple. We often hear that they are just a string that everybody should understand and they are well defined, right? Everybody should be able to distinguish between a phishing URL and the real one, right? And of course, it also should be super easy to write programs to understand and handle URLs. But it's not. In practice, we see a lot of issues because of URLs. And so I hope at the end of the video, you understand that URLs are maybe a bit more complex than they appear. So let's get started with a bug that recently was made public on the Chrome Bug Tracker by Tomasz Bojarski in May 2018. The title of the bug is UXSS, Universal XSS, in Chrome on iOS. Let me quickly explain what a UXSS is. So a typical XSS means that you can somehow inject your own malicious JavaScript into a website, and the JavaScript can then basically impersonate the user viewing the site. So let's say you want to steal somebody's emails from mail.google.com. JavaScript can only access stuff on the domain it currently is running on. So this means you have to find the XSS vulnerability in the website mail.google.com. So this means you can't write JavaScript on your website to access another person's email. You can easily test and simulate that with the console. Here I'm on liveoverflow.com and try to execute a JavaScript payload to get data from mail.google.com. But we get the following error. Fail to load HTTPS mail.google.com origin liveoverflow.com is therefore not allowed access. This shows that you need a XSS vulnerability on the mail.google.com domain. However, a universal XSS is typically abusing a bug in the browser and bypass somehow this origin check. The browser is the one that prevented us from accessing mail.google.com cross domain from liveoverflow.com. So if we somehow can fool the browser into allowing us to do that request and read the response, we have a so-called universal XSS, because then we can place JavaScript on any domain and access any data on any other site. So if there were a UXSS in Chrome, basically if Chrome failed to properly check the domain and prevent cross-origin access, any malicious site can steal data from any other site you are currently logged into. 
That's like apocalyptically bad. And now Tomasz claims to have found a UXSS bug in Chrome on iOS. So what does this have to do with URLs in the intro of the video? The vulnerability details say universal XSS by using dot dot semicolon at with the URL. What? Basically, if we run this JavaScript code, history dot replace state uh, with empty string, empty string and dot dot semicolon at www.google.com, our URL domain is being replaced to that one. What is history replace state? HTML5 introduced the history push state and history replace state methods, which allow you to add and modify history entries respectively. Replace state modifies the current history entry instead of creating a new one. Replace state is particularly useful when you want to update the state object or URL of the current history entry in response to some user action. Here you see it in action. It updates the URL above. As the description said, these functions are used to modify the history state of your web page so you can implement a fancy modern single page website that doesn't actually load each time but just modifies the URL when you move around. Here you see a real example. When you click on the tweet, the tweet pops out and the URL changes. But you didn't actually navigate away. And when you load the URL directly, a different page will appear. Anyway, Tomasz writes, if the code is run on my site, websafety.net, the URL is being replaced to www.google.com, yet the content remains under my control. Therefore, we can run unrestricted XHR requests. So if his website is websafety.net and he does the history replace with the dot dot semicolon at www.google.com, then the URL that the browser would now internally see would look like this websafety.net slash dot dot semicolon at www.google.com. And somehow this fooled the browser into thinking the current site is google.com, yet the JavaScript is still running from his site. This means now his JavaScript has the permission to access pages as if it were running on google.com. The browser won't block it. A universal XSS is born. Let's have a look at the bug discussion. Eugene from Chromium asked Tomasz, is this bug reproducible in Safari or Firefox? And he had trouble to reproduce the bug and Tomasz emphasized again that this affects Chrome on iOS, but he adds that there are different ways to achieve that on other browsers on iOS or Safari on Mac. But I think it's irrelevant as the subject only focuses on Chrome, right? But E. Lawrence clarifies, we are interested in understanding whether this reproduces in Safari and Firefox on iOS to better understand whether the root cause of this bug is in WebKit or in WebKit WebView or in Chrome code, which helps speed up the triage process. Maybe you didn't know, but on iOS, browsers actually have no control over the web browser engine. Chrome on desktop uses a fork of WebKit since version 28 called Blink, but iOS doesn't allow other engines. So your Firefox, Safari and Chrome on iOS must use WebKit or the WebKit web view. So yeah, there appears to be a UXSS in Chrome here, but maybe the root cause is actually not Google's fault in their Chrome code, but rather an issue of the underlying WebKit included in iOS. Eugene then reported, Firefox crashes and I can reproduce this bug in stock WebKit web view and ask, Ping, could you please escalate this bug with Apple? I will think if we can work around the issue. Okay, so it looks like Apple has to fix this bug, not Google. However, Google would like to protect Chrome users and implement a workaround. And here's the idea they have. It looks like some time is needed for XSS attack to steal a cookie from iframe. As a workaround, we could crash the browser once we detect the attack. In your previous comment, you mentioned that the vulnerability also allows to perform unrestricted XHR. Do you think it would be possible to execute XHR based attack faster than iframe based attacks? Crashing the browser will limit the time available for the attack to succeed. And that's exactly what they did. The workaround is to crash only if the URL's password or username contains the origin of the previous URL. The crash is targeted specifically for this vulnerability and should not affect legitimate websites. Thanks, Tomasz. I don't think Chrome can do better than crashing. The real fix should be done in WebKit. It's like this facepalm fix. Why does Chrome have to crash here instead of WebKit fixing it faster? 
but whatever, that's just the reality. I want you to remember the sentence, crash only if URL's password or username contains the origin of the previous URL. Here you can see some code they reference, crash on unexpected URL change. If the new URL is different from the current document URL and if the username or password part of the new URL contains the current document hostname, check false is executed, which caused the browser to crash. So Tomasz's bug somehow caused a mismatch between the current document URL and the new URL. Somehow the host of the current document URL became the password part of the new URL. You already can get a feeling for why the at is there. The at indicates the username and password part. And Daniel has a few more interesting details to offer. CC a couple of Apple security folks. The bug seems to be an error in URL parsing within WebKit. WebSafety.net dot dot semicolon at mobile twitter dot com is parsed correctly into the following parts. The host of the domain is WebSafety.net. The path of the URL is the stuff after the slash, so slash dot dot semicolon at mobile twitter dot com slash robots dot txt, and the username and password are empty because there is none. However, when this URL is sent to the network layer, the data returned is from https mobile twitter dot com slash robots txt. So I suspect the error happens when the URL is serialized in the WebKit and given to the network process IPC inter process communication and when parsed it is interpreted differently. The first URL parser in WebKit understands the URL differently than the network process layer. Wow! A bit later it turned out that the workaround had non-trivial amount of false positive crashes, we will disable the workaround in M67. But then congratulations Thomas. The Chrome VRP panel decided to award $7,500 for this report. So first of all, the award is so high because a UXSS is extremely dangerous. Like explained earlier, a malicious page could steal all your Facebook or Gmail data. But more interesting is that Google rewards this money even though the bug was actually an Apple bug. But Apple has a terrible bug bounty program and such a bug would have never been rewarded by them. So thanks Google for stepping up here. But poor Google, maybe this sets a precedence and now all the WebKit browser exploit hunters just report Chrome and iOS exploits to Google instead of Apple to get the money. So I wonder if Tomas accidentally submitted this to Chrome and not realizing that this is a WebKit issue or if he was just super smart here. Anyway, there is a point I want to make. So we have here an issue of two different components understanding the URL differently. For one component, this was simply the URL path. And for other components, this was a username and password and this was actually the domain and path. And these kind of bugs appear a lot especially in the class of server-side request forgery where one component tries to check if the URL is safe and then another component interprets it differently and the request goes out to the bad host. These bugs are actually used quite frequently in CTF challenges. While it's not a perfect example of a URL parser mismatch, my list or CTF write-up shows another related issue with URLs. Also two components understanding the URL differently. It provides some context why this is such a problem. But actually I would rather highlight the excellent work by Orange Tsai. URL parsing issues have been discovered before Orange Tsai, but his additional research is just an amazing resource. And they have been shared already a lot, but just in case you missed it, the title is A New Era of SSRF, Server Side Request Forgery, Exploiting URL Parser in Trending Programming Languages. He starts the talk with this quick fun example. He asks the audience, think about using one of the typical Python libraries to parse a URL. How would this URL be interpreted? So we have a few at here, so probably we have again a username and password part, but I mean, what is the host here? What IP would be accessed? Think about this URL, which address Python is going to access. You have five seconds to put the answer in your mind. Do you have the answer? 
OK, here is the answer. Actually, even Python's built-in libraries treat the same URL differently. URLlib access the blue part, and the URLlib2 access the orange part, but the green is request as. Very weird. I don't understand Python. Yes, very crazy. What do you think is the correct interpretation according to the RFC 3986? Let me know in the comments below.